A Fox News host is so fed up with Republicans and their inability to pick a Speaker of the House that she said something you really wouldn't expect to hear from a Fox News host. Well, we return to the main story in Washington, D.C. right now. Republicans and their embarrassing debacle surrounding the speakership. And I want to start with a clip of a Fox News host. Then we'll break down the latest on the situation. It's been so funny watching these bizarre moments from Fox News hosts who usually spend every day covering for the GOP and other Republican politicians where the situation has become so bad that they're saying all sorts of unexpected things at the detriment of the Republican Party. Here... Harris Faulkner praises Nancy Pelosi and says, you know who was good at whipping votes? That Nancy Pelosi. She she knew how to do it. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, Harris Faulkner is no fan of Nancy Pelosi, but things, again, have gotten so bad that she's willing to reflect on better times, I guess. Take a look at this. And you might have to have some whipping going on here where Tom Mm. Emmer, as the nominee, he is the whip, needs to make sure that he has the votes lined up. I mean, if you're the the whip, you know, you're supposed to be able to count the votes right on a vote on the floor. And, uh, you know, sometimes that's Mm. been a uh, an Achilles heel for Republicans lately. Yeah, you know who did it well? Boy, she could count votes. Nancy Pelosi. And and Republicans watch that from across the aisle uh, with awe and and frustration sometimes. It's honestly... So hilarious. Nancy Pelosi, for Fox News viewers and Fox News hosts generally, is Satan. And among Republican politicians, my goodness. But the contrast between her ability to actually get things done and keep her conference organized and do some of these basic operational things is now being admired by those very same haters, you could say. And we saw a similar thing from Republican Congressman Tim Burchett recently on CNN. We need some people. um, Speaker Pelosi, for instance, I'll give you a, you know, I, I don't agree with her ever, hardly on anything, but she uh, she was pretty successful in her and in, in the way she did it was she put an issue out amongst her caucus. She met with them. She got a um, uh, she figured out what they wanted mm-hmm. and then they put it on the floor and they passed it and they rallied around it. A lot of work goes into that, but we're not seeing that. I'm not seeing that work right now. And, um, and it's very disappointing to me. You know, I said when we covered uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene calling out the chaos of her own party, that that was proof of hell freezing over. Could you ever imagine the face of chaos calling out the chaos within her party that she helped to create? And same thing applies here. It's a chilly day in hell when Republicans start praising Nancy Pelosi and her ability to lead Democrats. So where do things stand as of now with the Republican Party? in their attempt to pick a speaker. Which, by the way, it's been really difficult figuring out when to record these segments because I'll sit down, be about to record, and then everything changes. As an example, it took Tom Emmer four hours, four hours, to go from being the nominee for speaker to dropping out of the race all together. So now Republicans are back to square one, meeting in private, trying to select a nominee. And the reason, by the way, that Tom Emmer was immediately rejected by the party is Rather unfortunate. Here's Donald Trump. I saw him ever, and it looks like he's finished. It looks like he's finished. He was not a supporter, he was a rhino, and it looks like he's finished, but we'll see. You never know. Do you support support anyone else for speaker, sir? Uh, I'll let you know. So I guess Tom Emmer was a rhino as well. I can't keep track of how many people they've called rhinos, but he's one of them, apparently. He wasn't pro-Trump enough, and some of the right-wing members were outraged that He was for same-sex marriage, against banning trans people from the military. And then here is Marjorie Taylor Greene pointing out the truly horrifying (laughs) policy um, of Tom Emmer. You know, once had had supported the voting rights, uh, the national voting movement that was completely against what we stand for. Can you even imagine being for protecting voting rights, the horror? That's the situation that we're in. The far right part of the party won't allow anyone who isn't pro-Trump enough or who, God forbid, thinks people who love each other should be able to get married. And then the moderate wing of the party isn't going to vote for someone who, for example, attempted to assist in the overthrowing of American democracy for Donald Trump and is otherwise extreme like Jim Jordan. So we're in a stalemate. And the very real question that's now being asked is, is there a single person who checks the right amount of boxes for the right amount of people who could become speaker? Is there literally one single person who could do that in the Republican Party? Or are the battle lines such that it's impossible for the House Republican Conference to unite around 
a single person. And if that's the case, then the next question is what's next? And I think that brings into the conversation an interesting possibility. Just in the name of getting back to work, would some Democrats unite with a few moderate Republicans to choose someone that they can agree upon? At some point, it has to get to that, right? Republicans have to be fed up enough at some point to do that because you'd only need a few moderate Republicans to join the Democratic caucus to elect Hakeem Jeffries or Democrats could unite around a moderate Republican if you could find one. But what I think is even more likely than that even though still not very likely, is a few Republicans just vote present, which wouldn't be a vote for Hakeem Jeffries, but if enough of them do it, then the threshold needed to attain the speakership would be dropped to 212 if you got enough Republicans to vote present, which is what Hakeem Jeffries, of course, already has with the Democratic caucus. So they wouldn't technically be voting for Hakeem Jeffries. It would be a protest vote. That's been floated. We'll see if it happens. By the way, you know who summed up perfectly the reality of the modern Republican Party? Jamie Raskin. This is from Brian Tyler Cohen's show, uh, No Lie, where Jamie Raskin just flawlessly puts into perspective the disaster that is the modern Republican Party. Well, look, I mean, we're dealing with a, a party now which has been involved in a violent insurrection against the union, an attempt to overthrow a presidential election, which Joe Biden won by more than 7 million votes in 306 to 232 in the Electoral College, has tried to shut down the government of the United States. Um, has tried to default on the debt of the United States, is talking about um, basically dismantling all federal regulation for clean air and clean water and climate progress and you name it. I mean, we're talking about a rule or ruin faction that wants power above all other things and doesn't have any vision for progress for the country. So I, you know, my message to people uh, whenever they call me a liberal, I say, you're damn right I'm a liberal. The heart of that word is liberty, and I'm a progressive because the heart of that word is progress. But these days, I'm very happy to call myself a conservative because unlike the party of nihilists um, and insurrectionists, I want to conserve the land, the air, the water, the climate system, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, the Social Security Act, the Medicare Act, Medicaid the Civil Rights Act of 64, the Voting Rights Act of 65, the National Labor Relations Act, the Fair Labor Standards Act, you name it. Everything that they want to tear down is everything that we want to conserve and make work that the American people have built up over the decades and centuries of progress that we've made. And of course, that's absolutely the case. I know I sound like a broken record on this, but I'm going to keep saying it until it's no longer the case. The Republican Party is not a serious governing party. Its leader, Donald Trump, is openly calling for the termination of the Constitution, making life-threatening statements against his former top general, attempted to overthrow, let's not forget, our democracy and install himself the president in 2020 and 2021 has been indicted four times, was found liable for sexual abuse in a civil trial, was found liable for business fraud, and on and on it goes. Meanwhile, House Republicans can't pick someone to lead them, don't have any coherent policy agendas, have no achievements to speak of in recent memory, and are being mocked by members of their own party repeatedly. You compare that to the agenda of someone like Jamie Raskin, night and day. With all of the issues of the Democratic Party, that's the only home for people who actually want to make progress. And as Jamie Raskin said, conserve our democracy, environment, and rights. It's the only party you can at least have a shot to get meaningful policy solutions implemented. The American Rescue Plan, for example, Inflation Reduction Act, Infrastructure Law, Chips and Science Act, etc. So please, America, would you do me a solid? Do us all a favor and vote Republicans out in 2024. Before you go, don't forget to become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get access to a daily bonus show. Mm, you're missing out. You got to get that entire bonus show Monday through Friday exclusively for our members. Plus, follow me on threads at Luke Beasley official Instagram at Luke Beasley official Twitter or X at Luke P. Beasley and sign up for the free Beasley brief a daily morning newsletter summarizing the previous day's events by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash brief and I'll see you all in the next video.